Hi, my name is Michelle Williams. I am alive on South Beach. Hi, I'm Venus Stewart. And I'm Stuart Stewart. And we're alive on South Beach. A show with a little bit of this. And a little bit of that. You know, when everybody celebrates the holiday season, even South Beach takes a break from the social season. And this was Christmas and Hanukkah on South Beach, where we celebrate it a little differently. And here we are, we're at, we're at a party for Henry Perez. And we're not going to say what number this party is, but it's a big one. He keeps, he keeps saying the number, but if you're not going to say it, I won't say it. He's 60, the same age as Godzilla, is the way he puts it. He aged much better than Godzilla did, don't you think? Henry Perez keeps me young. Which is the best Christmas party you've gone to this season? Oh my gosh, there's been a lot of them. It's not a party on South Beach unless Charlotte and Henry show up. That's absolutely true. So, you know, when you ask them what's the best party, I'm putting you on the spot. But come on, give me, give me the truth. The absolutely best thing we did was Christmas caroling on Lincoln Road. Feliz Navidad! Feliz Navidad! It has been an amazing, amazing Christmas season and also a Hanukkah season because oh my god we had Brett Ratner the famous Hollywood director lighting the menorah with Alan Dershowitz and the mayor and they were all doing a line dance singing and doing that line dance. absolutely I mean they they were I mean how can you top that anything at Miami Beach and um, Roger Abramson and the the shadow of his 10 foot shell menorah and I think he actually got all those shells diving I mean, how can you get any better than Christmas in Miami Beach? Well, there's nothing like Christmas on South Beach, and that's what makes South Beach, South Beach. Totally, absolutely, and I'm so glad you guys are there to capture it all. holiday and social season, Stuart and I went to the Miami Book Fair International, where we had an opportunity to speak with some very interesting authors. Well, i, I got to ask you a question. Yeah. Well, what's the big deal about I see you made an effort when, when you see somebody and they clean up well? <laughs> I see you made an effort? Well, let Annabelle Gerwich tell you. I'm sitting next to Annabelle Gerwich, who is an actress, a writer, uh, what else do you do? I'm a mother, a wife, uh, an environmental activist, uh, a supporter of Planned Parenthood. I, I, I get behind a lot of causes, uh, but uh, these days mostly I spend my time writing. Well, you just wrote an interesting book with a very long title, so why don't you tell me what it is? Okay, the title of the new book is called, I See You Made an Effort, Compliments, Indignities, and Survival Stories from the Edge of 50. So there's a reason why it's a long title. So some people just refer to it as I see you made an effort right and that was a line that was said to me I was on my way into a hair salon to see my hairdresser and I was on my way somewhere and I thought I was really dressed up and looking I couldn't have looked better and what he said to me was oh I see you made an effort I thought is is that as good as it gets now is this is this what I have to look forward to is this is this it is that all there is and in fact, it is. Um, and then, you know, the other part of the title came because the book is not a narrative. It's not, you know, my life at middle age. What it is is it's a series of essays. The title was meant to indicate that the essays cover the compliments, indignities, and the survival stories of being, uh, of, of being on the edge of 50. And I consider on the edge of 50 to be somewhere between 40 and death. 
the thing is, is that, you know, age has changed. Numbers have changed. These, um, well, one of the reasons I, first of all, I should say that I wrote 50 into the title because I felt that it should be spoken. You know, um, there's a phrase, you know, women of a certain age. And, and I really feel that's reductive and also does us a disservice to not actually be able to name this age. And, and 50 is still a half a century. There is a certain, I think, momentous moment about it. And not just in terms of the way the world sees you, because partially the book is about a sense of growing invisibility. But it's also about, you know, real things, biological things. At 50, I lost my fertility. That is something that must be reconciled. How do you reconcile that? Pinot Noir. <laughs> Reconciling it takes many forms, but the first form of it is, I think, to name it, to speak it, to not be afraid of it, or to fear it and, and name it. I mean, but it just, it must be spoken about. You know, I, I think that that's the first step. Well, looking into the future, do you fear 60 the way you feared 50? Tell you what I fear. I've seen the future. I've seen my mother's gobbler. Do you think you'll have another book at 60 reflecting on your 50 year? God, I hope to have another book in two years. I'm working on another book now. It takes me about that amount of time to get one out. Well, yeah. we'll be back here in two years, Absolutely. and I'd like to invite you to join me and again. Let me just say in two years, my mustache, because I, I am the mother of a teenager, and at any given moment, I have more chin hair than him. By then, I'm going to have it waxed just like yours. You know, I always thought of borscht as being beet soup, but I just found out something different. And what was that? <laughs> borscht is a film festival. I know, and I was, I was a little disappointed because when we first got the press release, and the information about it, it said Borscht Film Festival. I said, oh great, a film festival about food, and Borscht is my favorite. They'll probably be serving it at the after party. Well, it had nothing to do with no. Borscht the food. Then I thought maybe it was a Russian, Russian films, and they were always interesting. No. Nothing to do with that. And then I got this wild idea and said, wow, remember the Borscht Belt and the Catskills? Maybe these are films of those <laughs> old comedians, which were, you know, they were funny, so these would be really funny films. Well, you were disappointed had nothing again. to do with that. <laughs> but what it does is it's a film festival for young filmmakers who really are passionate about what they do and are just starting out. Miami has a lot of film festivals, and this one's a little different because it's made up of short student films and it's called the Borscht Film Festival. What brings you guys here tonight? Uh, we are one of the uh, of the filmmakers that will be featured tonight. Um, we're also a marine, bi I'm a marine biologist and we uh, we have some films of some flatworms and nudibranchs that are native to Biscayne Bay in Miami that are going to be creeping and crawling across the screen and we got some soft corals that are going to be flexing during the uh, bodybuilding exhibition before the screening of the films. And what about you? I'm a musician and I, I do the soundtracks for the, the films. Well that's very important. Um, and uh, yeah, so you'll, you'll hear some uh, Miami uh, inspired sounds. Why are you here tonight? I produced a film called Papa Machete, which is featured as part of the festival. It's going to Sundance next month. Uh, I also produced two other short films in the festival. Well, when you produce a film, what does that mean? What do you do? You basically do everything to make, to, to fulfill the director's vision, to, to give them the resources that they need to get the story told. Well, we're still at the Borscht Film Festival, but I'm talking to one of the most important components. He's the driver. And you told me, what does a driver do? We've been uh, picking up people from the airports, driving them to a location where they're holding uh, some of the events, like Grams. Uh, the other day we were at Siltsville. And uh, today we did Graham, so I picked up people from the Freehand or Intercontinental, which are two of the hotels where they're staying at. And then uh, we brought them to Graham's, and I went back and forth, stayed there for a bit. If anyone needed a ride somewhere, we got them out. Oh, I, I would imagine this takes a lot of training, you know, to, to really get there on time and yeah, pick of, them up. A lot of training, a lot of patience. Uh, you know, dealing with Miami drivers, uh, you have to have, be very patient, you know. Make sure everyone's safe, make sure everyone wears their seatbelts, you know. Where would this festival be if you didn't pick up all of the important people and deliver them? It, would, it wouldn't be happening. It wouldn't be happening. It wouldn't be taking place, you know? You know, up to now, the 
Performing Arts Center in downtown Miami was always a place where you went either for matinees or evening performances yeah. of shows or individual performers. But they've added something new. You could now go there and have a great breakfast and read some books all at the same time. Mm -hmm. And you, or you can go there for lunch or you can go there before you go to the theater. Yeah, they're open from 7 in the morning until after theater, whenever that is, like 11 o'clock at night, I believe. We're talking about the new Books and Books bookstore and Books and Books restaurant at the Performing Arts Center in downtown Miami. Yeah, the Arch Center for the Performing Arts. Well, I let you say that because <laughs> I, I couldn't, I <laughs> couldn't say it You mangle it. <laughs> We're at the Adrian Arsht Performing Arts Center where they have live performances but now they've added something new. They have a bookstore, complements of books and books, and they also have a restaurant, and that's this gentleman next to me. He's responsible for this. This is Alan Susser. You've been around for a long time. Well, I have. I've been cooking for quite a while, and I love to cook and create and feed people and make them happy. When did you first realize this is what I want to be when I grow up? When I was growing up, actually, I, I have always uh, cooked uh, since I was a little kid and just have enjoyed cooking. Cooking has been fabulous because it's a way of not only expressing myself, but also being able to enjoy the, the foods and the flavors and being creative. So that's really what, what food should be about. This is a new endeavor for Books and Books, and I wish you the best of luck. Great. Well, thank you very much. Glad that you're here and enjoy the, the food today, okay? Thank you. My pleasure. Imagine being a, an actor and you walk into the theater with the expectations that you're going to be auditioning and there may be two or three other actors there and that's the norm. Mm -hmm. But what happens when you walk into a theater mm -hmm. that holds a thousand people and every seat is filled with an actor who wants the same job that you do? You do the best you can. Well, this is two actors' stories. These two actors came all the way from New York to do this. How did you get this job? Well, I saw an open call for Beauty and the Beast on one of the acting websites, uh, and I stood in line, and I got called back a few times, and it was over a period of a couple weeks, and they also had different locations. They, they uh, auditioned in LA and Washington DC. I auditioned in New York City and then I was offered the job at the end of all the callbacks. <laughs> How many people were at your first call? I think that well the first call they said something around I think they saw around a, a thousand people on a first call and I think a total they saw over three thousand um, actors for the roles so well how did it feel when you <laughs> when you when you got the call and they said your, your book, you got the job. It felt quite amazing. It, it's, it's been a dream role of mine for so long. I actually played the role when I was 16 back in Texas. And, and so able to come back as a professional now and, and play the role, it's, 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 it was definitely something that I, I needed for my career and I felt was right in my heart and kind of always thought I would get it, but you just always never really know. And then it just worked out for the better. Well, you're on tour and you go to different cities. You ever wake up in the morning and wonder, where the heck am I? I actually did that this morning. <laughs> but I haven't done that that much. Yeah. This actually might have been the first morning where I woke up and said, oh, I'm in, I'm in, the, I'm in Miami today. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, we're reaching the end of another episode, and it's starting to get dark and we're losing the light. Yeah, so but be, be, before we say goodbye, I have to interrupt you, because okay. I need to give you a shameless plug. Oh. Dina's new book, In a Piece, it isn't out there. Check it out. And now let's get back to our closing. I'm Dina Stewart. And I'm Stuart Stewart. And we're alive on South Beach. At Books and Books on Lincoln Road for syndicatednews.net. Hi, I'm Alan Dershowitz, and I'm alive on South Beach. <laughs>